The number one thing with traveling with children is you have to change your mindset. You are not going on a relaxing vacation. You are not going on a chill little getaway. You are going on a vacation to experience the place through your children's eyes, like period. You need to know that. And you need to like think of it like that. When they're tired, they need a nap. They don't need to go to the next place. Maybe they need a car nap, that's fine. They're gonna be hungry. They're gonna be like wanting to get into things. They're gonna be, everything is new to them and exploring. And like the experiences that you will have will be really cool for you, but they will be so cool for them because they're just brand new to everything. Hey guys, my name is Shayla. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, we talk about motherhood. We talk, what is this hair? Woo! We talk about motherhood. We talk about pregnancy. We do things kind of eco-friendly, kind of natural, kind of hippie, kind of granola. If you're into that, please subscribe. If you're not new here, welcome back. Um, I have an almost four-year-old and almost two-year-old and I am 20 and 20 two weeks pregnant when this goes live. Today I'm going to talk to you about the thought processes of going to Hawaii with two children from Minnesota. If you don't know, this channel started out as, well it originally started out as Yoga Shay where I would post like yoga videos. Then I went to Living on a One Way which was full-time travel. So I was traveling full-time from like 2015 to like 2019. Legit going and living in different places for like months at a time. Then I had a child, life changed drastically. Now I'm on my third, so here we are. So I changed it to mom content when COVID happened and when my child happened and I was like, I'm never gonna travel ever ever again. Now here we are. When we first were like, okay, we wanna go on a trip. Where are we gonna go? My husband's friend at work, there's a bunch of people going to Mexico and I was like, perfect. And they were going with families. I was like, done. I don't have to do any thinking. You give me the dates, you give me the location. We just have to decide if we wanna go or not. And so we decided we were gonna go. And then we got an opportunity to go to Hawaii and Seth's bucket list is Hawaii. Hawaii was one of the places that I lived when I was traveling all over the world. And I was like, absolutely not with two children. Like, I do not want to do that plane ride with two children, two small children. It's not gonna happen. And then I was like, well, we got one that's almost four and one that's almost two. So technically we've got a lap child. So technically we only need to buy three seats for four of us. And if we don't do it now, we're about to have a third kid. I don't think I'll be up for the challenge when we've got three. It was like, it's kind of now or like in five years. So, okay, let's do it. So we had to cancel, luckily we could cancel the resort. Couldn't cancel the flights. We've got vouchers that don't work to Hawaii. It's with an airlines that doesn't fly to Hawaii. So we bought, I mean, essentially six flights, three to Mexico and three to Hawaii, but it's fine. We'll just, we'll just do little trips or something for the places that it goes. So this trip from the get was more expensive than it needed to be. So we were like, do we just do like the nine hour flight and just get there or do we break it up? And I was like, I think we should break it up. And I don't know, I don't know if that's, that's the right choice or not, but that's what we decided. And I think it is, I think it'll be, I'm hoping it's the right choice. The number one thing with traveling with children is you have to change your mindset. They're children, so like they don't really care that they're in Hawaii, it's just a new place. And so they are still gonna be like little hooligans. They're still gonna act up. They're still gonna have their tantrums. It's not gonna be like, well, we brought you all the way to Hawaii. No, like you're just bringing them for an experience. It's so important before you leave to change your mindset and to like give yourself more time than you need. If you're like, oh, I only need an hour at the airport. No, give yourself like two and a half because when things start to hit the fan is when you're crunched for time. And then it just, everything just starts to disintegrate and it's awful and it's terrible. Yeah. So we fly like mid morning, like 10 or 10 ish, which is good because our last flight to Arizona, we left at 6.30 AM. So we did it at like 4 AM, led to meltdown town. So 10.30, we'll leave the house at like 8.30, the girl, like it'll be a normal morning. Then we have like a three Three and a half hour flight to the west coast and then we have like a three or four hour layover and i'm like perfect we're gonna take it slow we're gonna get off the plane we're gonna move around we're gonna stretch good for me too because i'm pregnant we're gonna go get some lunch we're just gonna like take it nice and chill so i think we'll be the west coast from like noon to four ish and then we'll get on a six hour six and a half hour flight to hawaii and four o'clock west coast time is six o'clock minnesota time so i'm hoping that they sleep for like a good amount of time. So then of course I'm looking up all the gadgets that I need on a plane. Like what do I need? We use the CARES harness, which was like a five point harness for my oldest when the little one was like immobile. Like she couldn't really move around. She's just little and it worked phenomenally. On the last flight that we went on, not so great because the little one was like crawling around. So the big one wanted to crawl around. So she didn't want to be in her harness. So I'm not even bringing the harness this time. When I have to pay for both of them to have their own seats, they will each get their own harness and that will be a thing and it will be great. This time I've seen like these blow up kids 
these mattresses that extend all the way to the seat in front of them so they can like lay down. Then, because I posted that on Instagram, someone sent me like, there's like a hammock that connects to the tray table and then like to the back. So it's the same thing. So they can like play with the stuff, like it just extends their seat out. So both of them could sit on it. They could play with it. They can lay on it. Esme, like I said, we're not paying for her ticket. So she's a lap baby, but I don't know how much of a lap I'm gonna have. Cause I'm gonna be like 24 weeks pregnant-ish. I think I'm gonna buy that. It's like 30 bucks. Seems like the right move, I hope. But it's small enough that if it's not, it's fine. We don't do the car seats on the plane. That's why we do the five point harness. We're gonna check our bags. I think I'm gonna bring the double stroller too, which feels so aggressive, but also like not. It's a jogging stroller, so it's pretty big, but that's like the one that I love. Like it can carry some stuff. The kids can be contained a little bit. I thought about getting a wagon, but then everybody's like, no, you have to look at the airlines. Wagons sometimes aren't accepted. So I was like, okay, no wagon. So I think we're gonna do the stroller. Normally we carry the car car seats to the gate, like to make sure they don't get damaged. I really don't want to do that because they're so giant and I just want to keep things minimal. Like I went over for, for a friend's celebration of life to California with just the baby, did not bring a stroller because it was so much easier just to carry her. Didn't want a lot of stuff. I had to carry on. I had the baby. We were set. This was just a night. The part of me is like, do I need the stroller or is it going to be an extra thing that I don't want to have? And I honestly don't know the answer to that, but I'm going to bring it for the airport. And then like once we're there, we'll see if that's the right move. I'm also going going to check the car seats at the desk, not at the gate. Might put an air tag in there. My sister-in-law just went to Florida and they lost her car seats. So when they arrived, they're like, your car seats aren't here. And she was like, what? Like, how do I get to our Airbnb? So that's a little bit stressful, but you know, we'll just see what happens. So I think we're going to check two bags. And one thing that my mom always did was put everyone's toiletries in one bag so that if we only needed to check one bag, we could do that instead of having to check everyone's because there were toiletries in all of them, like the liquid thing. Oh, I usually put the floaties or like the life jackets in the car seat bag and the diapers in the car seat bag. And that's a gamble too. Like they could take those out because I don't think you're supposed to have those in there. And I'm like, well, if they do, then I'll pay for them once we get there instead of taking up space in my bag. What else? We put both of our girls who are both potty trained in diapers for the plane. Cause on takeoff and landing, they can't get up. I'm not trying to have an accident. I don't want them to panic. I don't want to panic. They would probably start crying if they had to go potty, even if they were wearing a diaper cause they don't want to pee in a diaper. I think it just prevents some of the mess. So I just tell them like, sometimes they don't let you get up because it's not safe. So we're going to put these diapers on just to make sure that we're good to go. And they're fine with it. They've been fine with it. Also on takeoff and landing, they cry. That's like when they cry because their ears are hurting. So nurse your baby, make your kids drink water, make them eat. Someone recently told me suckers because then they're just constantly swallowing. Suckers it is on the way up and on the way down. Here you go, children, here are your suckers. They said suckers or popsicles. I'm like, how would I even get a popsicle on a plane? I don't know. Suckers it is. So that I thought was a really good tip for like older kids, but always I nursed my girls up and down and it helped so much. I got nothing for the kicking. So if you got a tip on like getting your kid to stop kicking the seat, sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't, but when they do, I'm just like, oh, I'm actually worried that this sling thing, like with them moving, is gonna move the seat in front of them. So TBD, we'll see how that goes. Also, I was like, do I just pay for the lap child's extra seat? So we have four seats. But then I was like, what? Am I gonna be three with me and then sets across the aisle? Or do we do two in front and two in back? So that if there's kicking involved, like like my kids are pretty like clingy to me. So I'm like, what if she starts to have a meltdown that she's not by me? Then I guess we could do a lap seat. I don't know. It was like five or 600 bucks to add as me. And someone's like, just take advantage of not having to pay for it. And I was like, okay. That's what we'll do, so that's what we're doing. One thing that I learned from when I was traveling full-time, when you are booking flights, if you are flexible and you haven't like asked for time off yet, go to Google Flights, type in your departure location and your destination, and then just press search. Don't add in any dates. Then you can say how long you want your vacation to be, like, oh, I want it 10 days or five days or seven days or whatever, and it will populate the cost of the tickets on the calendar to show you if you leave on this date and you come back this date, this is how much your tickets are gonna cost. Then you can find the cheapest tickets and then ask for time off instead of being like constricted to like your time off if you have flexibility. That was a huge hack and that's why we're going on the dates that we're going on. Also, never have I ever bought trip protection because I was always just like, why wouldn't I be able to get on a flight? And if, and if they were cheap flights, I didn't care. I bought trip protection this time because it's like kids get sick on a whim. I bought it for my Airbnb. I bought it for my flights. I'm just like, I just don't want to have to lose all that money because I couldn't go. But also like, I feel like trip protection is kind of BS. Like you have to cancel and they're like, mm, well, that wasn't covered. And you're like, then what did I pay extra for? So 
We're gonna check our check bags at the desk, check our car seats at the desk. Then we're gonna have our strollers, our carry-on. Aaliyah has her own carry-on with like toys that she likes to have and some snacks. I will have an outfit change for all of us because it's a long travel day and I think airplanes are disgusting. So I'll probably just change my clothes halfway like on our layover before I get on the second flight because they're gross. The thought process in our Airbnb, we've learned through a couple of trips that we've taken. When we rent an Airbnb, we need a bedroom with a door so that we could, if they need to nap, we can put the, it's not like a hotel room where they're napping in this bed and you're sitting in this bed wondering what you can do because you don't wanna wake up the baby. No, a bedroom. So they have a bedroom where they can nap, they have a bedroom where they can go to bed and then we can come out and like hang out. There's a kitchen so that we can go to Costco in Hawaii, buy our food, make some food and save some money. A washer and dryer, that was like a non-negotiable, but I wasn't finding a lot with washer and dryers, but then I found one and I was like, yes, please. I don't have to pack as much. I don't have to worry about things getting dirty. I can like have clean clothes on my way home. Like a washer and dryer, mm, especially not having to pack as much because you can pack literally half and just rewear your clothes. Yes, crucial with kids. And I use cloth diapers at night because they hardly pee at night. And so that I can wash those and I wanted a pool because with kids sometimes you're just energy is like zero and there's is a hundred and you're like what are we gonna do today and you can just walk down to the pool ours has four pools I'm so geeked and then when you get there you just got to toddler proof a little bit you just gotta like pick up all the things that can get destroyed um, make sure that there's nothing like super dangerous in the cabinets that they can access and just make sure that it's like comfortable for you guys to stay in my cousin who will be our nanny this summer is coming down too she's in college and she's gonna come down for like four days she's doing like a 15 hour travel to and from for four days so I was like yes girl you are me you are my spirit animal she's like yeah I mean why not I, I've never been there and that would be fun and whatever and I was like great so Seth and I might be able to go on like a dinner date while we're there I'm like who are we we just have to bring my cousin to Hawaii to get a dinner date <laughs> weird and so I'm so excited that she's gonna be there because just extra hands will be nice she's super chill so it'll be fun to like experience Hawaii with her too but we still have like our family time outside of that but she's just gonna do all the things that we do and I'm like if you find anything you want to do let me know she's like snorkeling would be kind of fun so I'm like all right I just want to find a boat ride where we can like go out in the ocean and bring the kids and maybe see like, I don't know, the island from the sea. Okay, car rental. We're gonna have to get a bigger car because we have my cousin coming and because I'm bringing this double stroller. But before, I always like got the cheapest, littlest, like dinky little car that I could get. And when I started dating Seth, he's like, no, we need like something safer. And I was like, Ugh. and then when we had kids, it really became a safety thing. And I was like, all right, I'm on board now. But like, maybe we'll just get a minivan. I don't know. I haven't rented the car yet, but I'm gonna use my credit card points. Boom. All these expensive flights and Airbnbs will pay for the car. And then a couple other things. So the time change in Hawaii is gonna be insane. So I know from traveling that water, like grounding, physically touching the earth, getting in the ocean, taking a shower helps to set your circadian rhythm. Also, when you first wake up in the morning, getting outside and getting that sunlight helps. Like I said in the beginning with the mindset and like traveling, it's, I just, am, we're just gonna have to have a good mindset around the time change that we're gonna be up really early and it's just gonna be very interesting. And then the flight home is at like 9 p.m. So I'm hoping that they just conk out on the way home, but it's um, it's a five and a half hour flight. I don't know how much I'll be sleeping on that flight, so that might be the rough part, because I'll be, it's like a red eye. So I need to sleep, hopefully. And then we'll be on the West Coast for breakfast, and it's a short layover, because they changed it. So it's only like a two and a half hour layover, and then another three and a half hour flight. So that one will probably be the hardest one, because they'll just be getting up from a nap. It'll be, a sh it'll be, it'll be fine. It's gonna be fine. I feel like parents in general kind of just like overthink everything when it comes to traveling. So I just wanted to take you down my uh, my thought process with the flights, typically around nap time or bedtime when they're hopefully gonna sleep. At the last flight, they immediately got on their tablets and I had to be like, okay, in five minutes, we're gonna go to bed and like set that because they would have just stayed playing their tablets. So they kind of got fussy when I did that, but then they both fell asleep. And I like to put the baby in the carrier because then she can just like sleep and then I can sleep because she's like secured. So if you have any like comments on anything that I said, like as far as bringing the stroller or if you've had experience with the sling thing so that we can just share all that information. I think a lot of it is mindset. I think a lot of it is just accepting the circumstances, not trying to push anything too hard and just 
try to go with the flow and give your kids as much grace as possible and just try to enjoy it. Just try to enjoy this new experience. All right, see you guys next time. Bye.